So I pulled out my uh, meter that I built some time back that lets me measure the turns ratio and calculate the impedance ratio and then by default in my setting I'm using a, a 4 ohm speaker to uh, see what the reflected impedance would be back to the output tube. So this particular uh, transformer just under 39 to 1 turns ratio and again an impedance ratio of around uh, 14 high 1400s to around 1500 to 1. So real quick I wanted to uh, share something I've shared in the past. Many times you'll have an output transformer or even a choke where the uh, winding fails. Output transformer most common is the uh, primary side of the winding. So what I'd like to determine is the number of turns of wire for the primary and secondary. We already know the turns ratio for the transformer. We just measured that just under uh, 39 to 1. As you can see, I've got my uh, signal generator hooked up, just generating a, a sine wave around 1 kilohertz. This particular meter lets me read the uh, amplitude of that signal. Again, I'm just attached the signal generator here to my uh, primary input. And you can see for reference, I'm at 8.44 volts. So what I've done is take a, uh, some magnet wire. I'll try to zoom in on this. And again, winding around the core. I have a uh, winding of eight turns in my case. Uh, 10 to 20 may be better for more accuracy, but uh, that's where I ended up with the uh, wire that I had cut. So we have eight turns of wire. I can actually just use that. We can do some basic calculations and we can come extremely close to determine the uh, number of turns of wire that was used for this transformer for the primary side in addition to the secondary side. So again, we'll reference the uh, 844. I'll pop the math up here in the calculator on the screen. And then we'll move over to my eight turn winding. And take note of that. Just for more accuracy, I'm gonna flip my meter down to look at millivolts. So you can see we're about 26.8 millivolts or 0 0.0268 volts and as you can see that gives me a total number of turns of uh, 2519 now with the number of primary turns we can do some other basic math here I'm going to just move the meter now back to the secondary side of the transformer and we'll measure the voltage there we'll let that settle and you can see it's about 218.4 millivolts and we'll make note of that let's bring back up the calculator now so we'll take the 0.2184 volts that we measured, divide that by the 8.44 volts that we applied to the input uh, primary winding. Also multiply that by the number of turns that we calculated, 2519. And you can see that gives us roughly 65 turns on the secondary side. So taking those numbers, we can confirm that the turns ratio was correct. We can take the 2519 turns divided by the 65. And you can see we come back at 38.65, which matches our previous turns ratio for this uh, particular transformer.
We can then take the square of the uh, 38 and some change, and you can see that gives us a impedance ratio of 1493 and a half, which is also a match. Then taking the impedance ratio times 4 ohms for a loudspeaker, just under 6,000 ohms for the uh, reflected primary impedance. As I mentioned, one could change the uh, number of turns of your temporary winding. Um, I prefer 10. I just got a little short on my uh, wire when I cut it off, so ended up with 8, which is fine. I could rewind this transformer knowing the uh, number of turns for the primary in addition to the uh, secondary if I wanted to achieve that same roughly 39 to 1 turns ratio. Let me pull the original fuel coil over and uh, show you guys what I found on it as well. Okay, what I wanted to share, again, I can follow that same process for the fuel coil to understand the approximate number of turns. Um, you can see this, and I'll try to zoom in here with my other camera. The windings of this transformer, probably a number 39 to 40 AWG wire was used. Again, the maximum uh, capacity amperage-wise would be less than 20 milliamps. So these electrodynamic speakers back from this period, they uh, pushed the limits of the uh, magnet wire. That's why you see so many failures of uh, the fill coils and alike. The wire is uh, way undersized. The problem is going with a larger conductor and the area I have to work with, I'll limit the number of turns so my DC resistance, of course, will be less than 2500, which that's what this OEM coil is. And secondly, the uh, amper turns or amp turns will be less. So the magnetism of the center pole piece that protrudes through here will be less. In my build, uh, just to be able to fit everything in the area that I had to work with. I went back with 35 AWG and wound as many turns as I could basically fit in there. And I have a DC resistance of around 900 ohms. So I'll make up the difference with a resistor in series. I'll still have the same current flow, of course, but the amp turns for the coil will be about 25% less than what I have here. So the loudspeaker may perform or may not perform. It definitely will not perform as well, or at least that's my thoughts. But I may have one advantage. The diameter here, the core, was not in close proximity to the center pole piece, so that was separated by a few millimeters, and I've decreased the size of the new one, so it's a snugger fit. So I may make up some of the energy just by bringing the coil again closer to the center pole piece. Time will tell when we get to that point. Anyway, back to the math here on how to calculate the number of turns on the OEM, just in case somebody wanted to rewind it back with a similar wire gauge. And again, I'm assuming based on what little research and time that I spent somewhere around 39 to 40 AWG wire is being used. You can take note of our voltage here. 8.42. In my case, I've got 20 turns of wire just wrapped around the uh, coil. We'll let this settle. 
again 20 turns and you can see we're at 0 0.0147 volts we'll do some quick math here on the calculator like we did before we'll take the 8.42 volts we had on the input side we'll multiply that by the number of turns that we placed which was 20 and I'll divide that by the voltage that we read off of our 20 turn winding and that gives us again around 11,456 turns. Before I conclude the video let me uh, grab the loudspeaker and I'll show you guys where I'm at right now. So here's the little path loudspeaker again just a donor surround I built a new cone. You can reference the video in the video description itself for the right top corner of the screen. I've uh, sealed around the cone. I'll probably go around it one more time on the front side and back side. There's the uh, new fill coil that I just talked about using uh, 35 AWG wire. The new handmade voice coil. Again, I've got the uh, DC resistance uh, just above uh, 4 ohms, knowing that the 2A5 tube likes to see a reflected impedance around 7,000. So. I'm just north of uh, 3.2, which was pretty close to the original voice coil. And I'm just north of 4 ohms on this one. The uh, homemade spider in place. Again, the cone is not attached at this point. Back to the voice coil or to the uh, frame of the speaker. So just a little more work to be done. I'll clean up that output transformer, get it remounted at this location, and tie in the conductors. We'll energize the uh, field coil, ramp up the uh, current to about 39 milliamps. and uh, see what kind of audio we can get out of the loudspeaker. Hope to have more uh, soon. Thanks for watching, folks.